Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 97. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three YouTube videos a week. How? Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, Games Workshop came out with some new models. We have some new Games Workshop controversy to talk about. And I'm going to talk about Legos, and you'll see why. <laughs> But first, let's look at the new stuff, because I want to talk about the new stuff. Sky Hunter Squadron swoop in to provide supporting fire. The 30k jet bikes have gotten a plastic new kit, and they, they look very good. But for some reason, I always have a little bit of a hard time with Space Marine vehicles, because Space Marines are Captain America. They're super soldiers. They're meant for combat and they have their bolters and their chain swords and they can just mow through enemies and it's always a little bit weird when they get into vehicles like it's you know captain america wouldn't drive a tank or iron man wouldn't drive a car like wearing his iron man suit he doesn't need to and i get it's 30k and so in 30k you don't have like the imperial guard to do most of the work and then the Space Marines to swoop in at the last minute and take all the glory. Like 30K is just Space Marines, so it makes perfect sense that they would have to fill all of the roles that are maybe not necessary for a Space Marine. And I get that a Space Marine on a jet bike would be worth, you know, 100 million humans on jet bikes because Space Marines are so, so much better. But it just looks a little weird for their giant hulking power armor to just like be at the controls of a vehicle and just go vroom, vroom, vroom. And like, is there is the controls of this vehicle designed for the super incredible power that the suit of armor provides for them and their super enhanced muscles? Like if a human got on the speeder bike, would they not be able to turn the steering wheel because it's so strong? I always wonder about stuff like that, but I do like the look of these jet bikes. Um, my head immediately goes to White Scars, like White Scars should be the only ones to use something like this and the Raven Guard because they like to do lightning strikes on their enemies. And I suppose it also makes sense that the Sons of Horus have the jet bikes because they also do lightning strikes. But uh, it just it looks a little weird. These little space marines on these kind of deodorant stick looking speeders. I'm very torn. They look really good. But on the other hand, they seem very silly. It might be that they're flying too high up, like on that flying stand is so high up from the base, it makes them look a little bit more toyish. Like my mind immediately goes to the old Assault on Blackreach Defcoptas with those flying stands. And the Defcoptas are meant to look ridiculous, and that's why they're great. Where these are meant to look like really, really cool and slick. But then they're floating above that little base and it looks a little silly. So I don't really know. I, they look good. They do look very good. The new speeders are very cool. And I think if you pose them doing like these little swooping moves or on angles or painting them white scars, I think they would actually look really, really neat. But that is the new thing that Games Workshop made. Now it's time to talk a little bit or maybe a lot a bit about that controversy. Games Workshop has made the new Imperial Guard models available to pre-order. Some people already have them in hand and the Rogaldoran tank, the super cool, super sexy new tank for the Imperial Guard, has sort of no bottom. If you turn the tank over, there's like a three inch by four inch section of the bottom of the tank that's just missing. It doesn't exist anywhere on the sprue. It's just a hole in the model. And this has got a lot of people very angry. It's and it probably should. It is sort of incomplete. I mean, I've never painted the bottom of a tank. I don't. Most people don't paint the bottoms of their tanks, but that doesn't necessarily mean you don't care if there is a bottom to the tank. It's it is incomplete and it is a little frustrating. And there's a whole host of ideas out there of why Games Workshop would do something like this. And obviously the correct answer is make a fourth sprue, have that piece on there and then just sell it in a bigger box. But I have an idea that I'm pretty sure is right on why that didn't happen. And the way I can explain why this particular Games Workshop plastic crack thing happened is by going to the other plastic crack, Lego. Lego recently released a new set, set number 21337, the foosball table. This set is a functional foosball table, but it's not a full foosball table. So the Lego ideas line comes from people can submit their ideas of what would make an interesting Lego set, 
And then if it gets over a certain number of votes, the Lego designers will kind of take it under their wing and try to figure out if they can turn this into a real functional retail set. And that's come and tons and tons of really cool sets have come out that way. Lego Wally, -E, uh, the Office Lego set, the Seinfeld Lego set. You get lots of really, really cool stuff that Lego would never ever really produce. But because of this Lego ideas thing, they actually get to make those things sets. And then I get to buy them really, really cool. But this foosball table, somebody came up with the design for a full size foosball table with 22 little foosball players. And you got your little your little bars and you're playing the foosball game. But what happened was when Lego starts to make a set, they come up with the size of the set and the price first so that they can make their year. They're like, OK, these are the sets that we're going to be able to sell to real tailors to sell to customers. And so we need a certain number of cheap sets, a certain number of medium sets, a certain number of very expensive sets. And that's all planned in advance. And then the design team has to work around that number. And so if you're given the, the goal of making a foosball table for a $250 retail price, you have a certain number of parts that you have to use. The only problem was an engineering problem. To make a foosball table, you know, foosball is a pretty intense, aggressive game. And Lego, it's fairly robust, but there's still a lot of delicateness to Legos. And they were limited by the largest sized axle. The Lego Technic axle is, I believe, 32 studs long. So it's not very big. The Lego Ideas person who originally made a foosball table, they just linked a bunch of those together. But if you're slamming those foosballs back and forth, you're going to pull the Legos apart and it's going to break. And Lego can't sell a set that's you're going to have to baby. It has to be able to stand on its own and be a functional set. And so they had to scale the size of it way down to take advantage of those 32 long axles. And so they made a foosball table that is very playable and it looks pretty darn good. And it didn't use like a hundred dollars of parts. It was it's a tiny little thing still functional and playable and it would look good on the desk, but they had all of this budget left over and they can't change that. They were stuck with we got to figure out a way to really pad this out to get it back up to that full price because it's the price of what a full size Lego foosball table. I mean, not full size, like not. It's like humongous, but and you know, a $250 Lego foosball table should be pretty big. And this was pretty small. And so the whole project almost got scrapped. But the designers thought, well, maybe we can figure this out. And so they super overbuilt the foosball table using as many parts as they possibly could, which does make it look very lovely. But then they were like, we're still like $50 short of our targeted goal of the parts count, you know, about 10 cents per per brick. And so they're like, well, a normal foosball table will have 22 players and ours only has half that. So why don't we just throw an extra 12 players and a little like a viewing booth to house all of those extra figures? And then I also you also get like a ton of extra heads and a bunch of extra hair pieces so that you can, I guess, decide exactly what the six players or the 12 players you want on your foosball table. And it's kind of yucky, like it makes for a nice little set. But I think people would have just preferred to get a lovely, cute, small, functional foosball table from Lego. That's like $150 as opposed to spending an extra hundred dollars on a bunch of parts that really aren't necessary. They're completely for superfluous. And so this project ran into a time problem and a budget problem. And, you know, Lego could have done a lot of different things, but they decided to, to go forward and it just the whole project didn't quite come together. And I bet that the exact same thing happened with the Rogel Dorn tank. I'm sure like two years ago when Games Workshop decided that they were going to be selling some new Imperial Guard stuff, they gave the Rogel Dorn tank a budget of it's a three sprue large vehicle. And so make a tank that fits on there and we can sell when everything is ready to drop. And so the designers built the Rogel door tank and it's beautiful. And it's like seven inches wide. It's a really, really big tank. It's got way more details than any previous Imperial Guard tank. And it's really, really lovely. And when they went to go cut it apart and put it on the sprue, there was way too much stuff because, I mean, you've got three pilots with options sticking out the top of the sucker. You've got barrels and canisters and sandbags and shovels and tow cables and tons and tons of different weapon options and something had to give because they can't postpone this set and add in another sprue. Like Games Workshop could afford to do a fourth sprue, but I bet they couldn't afford the time it would take 
to kind of go back to that engineering stage and make a new sprue, fill it with stuff, put in that new bottom plate that you could glue onto your tank because the Rogel Dorn tank is the flagship of this new Imperial Guard release. People are excited about the new Sentinels and the new Cadians and the new heavy weapon teams, but those probably aren't going to be the thing that really pushes sales. People, and you know, Ursula Creed, as cool as she is, she's probably not a real mover in terms of sales, but the Rogel Dorn tank is. And people who might not have been as primed to buy, you know, a bunch of new Cadians or a bunch of new heavy weapon teams, they probably are primed to get the new Rogel Dorn tank and some of those other things. So the new Rogel Dorn tank has to, has to come out. And so something had to give. And the designers were thinking, I mean, the bottom's really not that important. Nobody's ever really going to look at it. So maybe to get an extra 16 square inches of, sp of sprue space, we just delete that little three inches of the bottom. And now we have room for all of those extra details and decorations. And hopefully consumers won't really care. And I think, even though I think that they, they you know, really, the correct answer would have been to make that fourth sprue and to have it all be perfect. I do think consumers don't really care. I mean, you know, just from looking at the internet and Facebook and stuff, the Rogel Turn tank is moving. People really like the new Rogel Dorn tank and it looks lovely and it looks beautiful. I expect to see a bunch of them at Golden Demon because all of the tank people who build these perfect, immaculate, beautiful replicas of like the Abrams tanks or all of these historic tanks are going to be like, well, that 40K, that new Games Workshop kit is pretty much just a perfectly normal tank. And so why don't I take my skills and put it to this new thing and maybe win an award? I think the new Rogel Darn tank is awesome. And there's a ton of negativity about this missing bottom because it is ridiculous. It's ridiculous for a $90 tank to not come with the bottom. But I bet it wasn't. I bet it was a little bit Games Workshop being greedy, but it was definitely more to do with time. Because if anybody has ever made things to sell, you know that the biggest problem is always time. It's not really the budget, it's not materials, it's just time. Time is the most valuable thing. And if, you know, Games Workshop made the decision, we're not giving the Rogel Dorn tank more time. If the new Imperial Guard stuff comes out without the Rogel Dorn tank, it's gonna hurt sales a lot. We need this new kit, we need it to come out, figure it out. Okay, we're, we'll, we'll delete the bottom to give us room for all of the other cool little interesting details that we could put in the tank. Just like the Lego foosball table, it will, you know, they could because Lego engineers, they could have said, well, maybe we we take we put this out next year and we do a little bit more engineering and designing. Maybe we make our factories create an axle longer than 32 studs long, but they couldn't because of time. So ah, the Rogel Dorn tank and the, the bottomless Rogel Dorn tank. It's very, it's very, uh, you know, maybe not safe for work. You know, be careful before you uh, turn that tank upside down. Um, I have seen some really fun comments where people are like, maybe I'll take the Rogel Dorn tank because it's hollow with a pretty good sized hole in the bottom. Maybe that's where you keep all of the extra bits, like all of the extra guns and weapon options, especially if you magnetize the tank. And then, and then all of a sudden the tank becomes like a little bit of a maraca. You got all of your extra guns in there and you just... That could be adorable. Uh, there's already been some people who have made a 3D printable just base plate that you can fit in there and it completely covers up the tank. And, you know, there may or may not be some basically perfect replicas of the Rogel Dorn tank floating out there as an STL that you can just print the entire thing of. And of course, it does have that plate. I love, um, you know, there is like a, it's not a seedy underbelly, but there is like a little subgenre of 3D printing that is the, uh, almost Games Workshop, or I can't believe it's not a Games Workshop kit. And the Rogel Dorn tank is going to fit in there lovely. And they always have like fun names, you know, instead of instead of Space Marines, they're like Star Soldiers or, they, you know, they're always something that's just different enough that people might be able to find it through searching. But Games Workshop hopefully won't find it through searching. And so I wonder if like the Rogel Dorn tank STLs are going to be called like Tank with Bottom. <laughs> And people know if they search tank with bottom, they're going to get a copy of the Rogel Doran tank or something very similar to the Rogel Doran tank. But please let me know in the comments below, Rogel Doran tank missing a bottom. Is this a deal breaker? Does this make you upset? Do you not really care? I don't really care. I would have preferred a bottom, but I was never going to paint that bottom or look at that bottom. 
I don't really care that much about the bottoms of tanks. I do appreciate, I guess now, that all of my previous Warhammer tanks do have bottoms. Although I think that this actually isn't the very first time Games Workshop has had a no bottom or a unfortunately hollow construction. The Skitari hovercraft transport, I believe if you flip that upside down, you just see all the guts. You don't, it doesn't have an actual bottom plate to it because that is a very, very detailed, weird little Skitari vehicle. And so I think that is the one other time that Games Workshop didn't make an actual completed mini. And then also Games Workshop doesn't often do beautifully sculpted bottoms of vehicles. I think the best one is probably the old orc buggy or not the orc buggy, the orc truck. The orc truck is a you can turn that any which way direction and it looks like a really good ramshackle orc with all of the components and the engineering you would think it would have, which is wild because that's kind of an older kit. But that's the only that's the only 40K vehicle I can think of that actually has a pretty well designed bottom. The Gene Stealer, Goliath, Rock Grinders. If you flip that upside down, it's finished and it's sort of detailed, but it's sort of just boxes. They clearly spent all of their real engineering budget making the tops and the things that you actually look at look beautiful. And the bottom is just mostly flat. And the old Rhino and Land Raider is literally just flat, just completely nothing underneath there. Which is kind of funny because the Rogel Dorn tank, it has these veins that run through it, which is probably for structural support. Like I would expect real tanks in the real world to have something like that, just to make sure that these long pieces of metal are very rigid and strong. And then, you know, these these veins go all the way through the underside of the tank, except for that three inch section that is just omitted. It's a wild, wild thing. It'll be, ooh, if Games Workshop ever made an upgrade sprue for the Imperial Guard, because they used to do this back in the day. I know the, um, the Lehman Russ, which has been through several different design iterations, there is like a vehicle upgrade sprue for the Imperial Guard that comes with those really nice um, tread, uh, tread covers, or I guess the, um, yeah, the tread of the tank covers. The, and, the, and it comes with some other little bits and bobs like searchlights and I think an extra crew member. And you have to buy them separately from the tank and it costs like an extra $20 to turn your Man, the Lehman Russ is already pretty expensive and it makes it even more expensive if you want those completely superfluous details. And Kim's Workshop doesn't really do stuff like that anymore. They actually might still sell it, but they used to sell this kit called the Vehicle Upgrade Sprue, which came with a hodgepodge of upgrades for random like random factions of 40K. Like there's some Tau bits in there, Chaos Space Marine bits, Space Marine bits, Imperial Guard bits. I don't remember if it has any Eldar stuff. I don't think it does. It might come with some like Wave Serpent extra guns. But nobody would buy that because why would you buy something that comes with one little bit for your faction and then a whole bunch of other stuff for factions that you almost certainly don't connect or collect? It's a really a bizarre thing. But basically what I'm trying to say is, like, would there be uproar if Games Workshop made a vehicle upgrade sprue that did come with that extra bottom for the Rogel Doran tank? Like, because at that point, people have their tanks and they've decided if that they don't care about the hole in the bottom. And so would people be tempted by like a $25 upgrade sprue so that they could have one extra shovel to glue to the side and the bottom? Because the bottom takes up a ton of sprue space. So it's going to be like 25% bottom and then, you know, 75% other little gubbins to glue on. I think people would be upset. <laughs> I mean, people are going to be upset no matter what happens. But I think that that would really, really annoy some people because obviously... And, you know, except for time, that could have been put in the box because Game of has really good margins on their plastic things. I mean, if you want to sell anything, you hope to have very good margins. And so if, you know, if the guard were maybe coming out next year, it probably would have been a four sprue bigger box design. But because it's coming out this year, it's a three sprue design. And Games Workshop is fitting more and more things onto their sprues. If you have, I have a bunch of old, old, like, fourth, fifth, sixth edition plastic kits, and you can fit you know, almost your whole hand between some of the gaps in the sprue, where now, like you could, you could filter your pasta, you could pour your mac and cheese through a GW sprue and no pasta would fall through. It's kind of amazing, and it looks very impressive when you hold up a modern Games Workshop sprue. The Rogel Doran tank, I'm, I can accept the no bottom, but I don't know if I'm fine with the no bottom, but it is just, it's just a weird little thing. And speaking of weird little things, this week I painted the Red Guard from Star Wars. I'm making some great progress on my Star Wars Legion Imperial Army, and I'm glad I did the Rebels first, because now I don't care at 
all about the rebels. It's all the Imperium. I or Imperials, not the Imperium of Mankind. That's 40k. But the the Empire. I love the Empire from Star Wars. I mean, growing up, we only owned four VHS tapes. We had the original Star Wars and Jurassic Park. And I've seen the original trilogy hundreds and hundreds of times each. And I love the Empire. They're just so neat. And I got the Royal Guard for Christmas. Um, I bought it for myself. <laughs> and I was really nervous to paint these guys. I mean, not nervous. I didn't think they'd be hard. I thought they'd be a really easy paint job. But I thought it would be really, really hard to make guys who are all one single color look interesting. But and I don't know if I achieved a super, super interesting look. I tried to use a bunch of different reds and I think that they look fine. I think they look better than maybe like the actual box art painted models, but it was tricky. It was really tricky to get these guys to look unique and interesting. And one thing I did to make them look inter more interesting is I gave them each hero bases. I gave them all tactical rocks. And I think that helps a lot and it does make their poses a little bit more dynamic because they all are holding their little electro poles a little bit differently. And so I tried to make the rocks so that their poles so that it helped improve the overall pose. Like this guy has got a rock pointing up and then his little electro staff is pointing down. And so I think it makes it a little bit more powerful to have these different lines going on in the miniature. And I and what was kind of nice with these really, really simplistic models is I got to do a little bit more free handing or not free handing, but highlighting than I would think like on a stormtrooper, you just get the armor looking good and you get a good amount of contrast there and they're done. But with these guys, I mean, you spray paint them red and they're done. So now what's the next step? Well, I got to do some really nice highlighting on their face because their helmets are made out of super, super glossy plastic. And so I went nuts with the reflections, just getting out the white paint and just painting that on there to hopefully make it look like a little bit of a different material. And I think they turned out decently, but really what I'm excited about these Royal Guards for is that there's two miniatures for the Empire that I actually didn't really have any interest in painting for some reason, and that is Darth Vader and the Emperor. And maybe it's just because the Darth Vader and the Emperor are just so ubiquitous to Star Wars that I find some of the weirder little things that the, some of the outliers a little bit more interesting, like the shore troopers from Rogue One or the, the uh, what are they called? They're not Exoforce, but the tie, the new TIE fighter, like super dudes, like the commando TIE fighters from Battlefront 2. Like those guys are a little bit more interesting to me just because I haven't spent so, so much time with them, like I've spent with the Emperor and Darth Vader. But now that I have their little sidekicks, their little bodyguards, I'm like, well, I can't just have the bodyguards and not have the heroes that they're defending. And so now I've got Darth Vader out on the painting desk. I've got the Emperor coming to me in the mail, and I am excited to get those guys painted up. These guys are on some tactical rocks. Darth Vader is going to be on a really, really big rock because obviously Game of Shop taught me if somebody is important, they're standing on a rock. And if they're really important, they're standing on a really big rock. And so I am excited about my Star Wars Legion Empire Army. I'm slowly working my way through all of the Star Wars Legion miniatures because I do want every single one of them that they make. And I also really got to get this, get a move on this because I would love to have a lot of my Star Wars Legion pile of shame finished because Shatterpoint is coming out very soon. Like, very soon and I do want to also get the minis for that game and paint them up and play with them and so whew, I have a lot of Star Wars stuff to paint oh darn I have to paint some Star Wars miniatures ah good old Empire not only do I love my Empire Star Wars Legion army but I actually collect Star Wars Imperial Legos it's a very Lego heavy episode today but I have a giant baggie of stormtroopers. Basically, every time Lego comes out with an Imperial set, I buy it. I still have a lot of my Empire sets from when I was a kid that are sitting in a tub in my mom's basement. Maybe I should go grab that one day. But uh, I love the Empire so much and I have such a huge collection of Imperials. There's just not enough time in the day. There's not enough time in the day to get all the painting I want done, but still. Uh, one, I've, I've pretty much finished one Star Wars Legion unit a week, so I consider that a win. But speaking of things that are winning, that's right, our Patreon. 
Over there, we have new terrain packs every single month. This month, we have the Dark Factorum, a grim dark factory full of blood and viscera and rivets and blood. And it's awesome. It's a super modular board that comes in over 75 components. Also, we make painting guide PDFs, one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give them some helpful ideas of critiques of how they can improve their painting. We also host live Discord hangouts in a new tier where you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines and you can join the Crusade. And if you're thinking of picking up any miniatures, maybe some of those new Imperial Guard models and you want a discount, you can shop at Valhalla Hobby. If you use our code linked in the description below, you can get 5% off your first order. As frustrating as it is that the new Rogal Torn tank has no bottom, I don't know if that's going to prevent me from picking one up. If Games Workshop ever makes it a playable unit for the Gene Stealer cult, I think I'll definitely get one of those suckers. But first, I gotta get through my Imperial Star Wars pile of shame. Bye bye.